Hi, my name is Linda, and welcome to the Cozy Christian Soul. I am so glad you joined us here today, and our Bible study today will be on Priscilla. She and her husband, Aquila, were workers in the early church and co-workers with the Apostle Paul. But before we get started, let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning in the precious name of Jesus, thank you for your presence here with us, Jesus. Anoint me that um, I will, as I teach this lesson, it will be none of me, but all of you, Jesus. I pray you will anoint all of our ears, that you can teach us, and that we will learn from your faithful servant, Priscilla. And I ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not much is known about Priscilla, and I wish there was more known about her because she is a spiritual inspiration to me, along with uh, Mary of Bethany. Um, not much is known about Aquila either. And, um, you know, I've heard many sermons in my life. But um, I've never heard one that on Priscilla. I've heard them on Mary and Martha, on Deborah, on Mary Magdalene. And even um, I've seen her mentioned in very few books. I like to collect books from thrift stores on uh, women of the Bible. But I've uh, very seldom is she mentioned even in books about women of the Bible. So if you have ever felt uh, slighted or overlooked, then Priscilla is a good role model for you too. So um, we want to start here by looking at Acts chapter 18, verses 2 and 3. It says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them, and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. So, um... I don't know, you know, like I said, it doesn't tell much about them, except that um, Aquila was from Pontus, um, and this was a city in uh, what would now be uh, modern-day Turkey, uh, but apparently he moved to Rome. Uh, not much is known about Priscilla, but inscriptions in the catacombs said that she was from a very uh, influential family in um, Rome at that time. So no doubt they met in Rome and were married. We don't know if they um, became uh, Christians in Rome or if it was in Corinth under the teaching of Paul that they became Christians. But um, by the time they um, met Paul, they must have had a very good reputation because uh, So I think that um, they probably became Christians in Rome. And then when Claudius um, made all of the Jews leave, they moved to Greece, to the city of Corinth. And there they met the Apostle Paul. And so they, um, they work with them, and he lived with them. They must, um, you know, he, they must have had just a sterling reputation that Paul took them and made them co-workers with him. And uh, what a blessing. Can you even imagine getting in the evenings to sit and listen to the Apostle Paul and talk to him? I can't imagine how wonderful that would be. Um, so we want to um, go down now to some other verses here. And um, we want to look at verses 18 and 19, uh, still in, in, in uh, Acts 18. 
It says, And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centria, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. And um, if we uh, turn over here in First Timothy, I mean, I'm sorry, Second Timothy 4.19, uh, this is a letter written to Timothy, who was the pastor of the church in Ephesus. So it says, uh, Salute Prisca, which was Priscilla's formal name, and Aquila. And um, so um, they were living in Ephesus, and they did establish a church in their home. Um, I, uh, that, what an exciting time this would have been in the early church. Now we're going to look here at um, verses, and we're still in chapter 18 of Acts, starting with verse 24. It says, And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, and an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being proven in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So Priscilla here, um, we know that um, they had a church in their home. They know um, that Paul had left them there to establish a church. And uh, we also know that Priscilla was very, very active in the ministry. Um, you know, it's so sad today that uh, many churches will not let women work in churches. And they um, will let them teach children or work in the kitchen, and those are very honorable positions and a calling from God, but some women have a different calling. And But there are still churches today, 2,000 years later, that say a man, sh I mean, a woman shouldn't teach a man, or, you know, they um, shouldn't take part in church. And, of course, we read here that uh, Priscilla taught with Aquila uh, Apollos, and also we read in the Bible that Philip had five daughters who prophesied. And we also know that the Apostle Paul wrote and said that when a woman prayeth or prophesieth, <laughs> my tongue got twisted, um, that uh, they should wear a covering on their head. So, um, you know, as I talked about when I did the lesson on Mary Magdalene, Jesus liberated women, and women had a very, very active role in the early church. And so, um, you know, it's a shame that women today are muzzled and kept from talking. Um, I, I understand this because um, I have preached in churches and uh, one time a pastor announced that I was going to be preaching in the evening service. And a man there said, if she um, preaches, then I am leaving the church. And with it goes my tithe, which was great. And to the pastor's credit, he said, well, there's the door. Um, because Linda will preach tonight. And so he recognized that I had a calling on my life. And that was good preparation because even though my husband, Will, was the pastor in New Mexico uh, after he got cancer and was unable to come to church and after his death, um, I, um, uh, you know, preached at his, at his church. So it was very good training for me that I was able to preach also in Cincinnati. Turn to, um, uh, now to Romans 16. 
Romans 16. And we're going to read in uh, verses 3, 4, and 5. Paul must have loved this couple. And how they must have loved Paul. Because he gave them here such high praise in Romans 16. It says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. So Paul had a great love for them. And we do not know how they risked their life for um, the Apostle Paul. But he said that they laid, uh, for my life, laid down their own necks. So it sounds like a beheading that they were in danger of. So what a blessing they were for him and how God worked that out that they met in Corinth. And, you know, um, they did a lot of moving. Uh, they started out in Rome, and then they went to Corinth, which is in Greece, of course. And then Paul took them to Ephesus, and they had a church there in their home. And um, then they um, returned to Rome. This is, uh, is a letter written to the church at Rome. And Paul, of course, says to greet them. So they had a lot going on. And um, so they were very active in the early church. Um, you know, um, a lot of people wonder, what happened to Priscilla and Aquila? And we don't know. This is um, the last, um, you know, information that we have here with them. And, um, but tradition, and again, we're speculating here, but tradition says that um, when uh, the great fire in Rome uh, happened and much of Rome was burned and the Emperor Nero blamed the Christians for causing the fire and that Priscilla and Aquila were martyred uh, by the Emperor Nero. So a sad ending, but if we could see Priscilla and Quilla in heaven now and talk to them, uh, like I said, which we will one day, uh, but if we said to them, was it worth it? They would say, oh, yes. No matter what we suffered here on earth, it doesn't even compare to the 2,000 years we have spent in heaven and not only that, but we will be here with the Lord Jesus Christ for eternity. And they were reunited with um, Paul not long afterwards um, because Paul was beheaded in Rome after being in prison. So, you know, um, we learn a lot of the early church history, but if... Um, we don't apply it to our lives. It's just reading history. So we want to know uh, about their lives to learn from them. And um, there are so many lessons in the lives of um, Priscilla I, um, and Aquila. And, you know, like I said, she has been a spiritual inspiration to me. First of all, um, you know, I'm sure she got discouraged. Um, I'm sure that um, especially after they went back to Rome and they saw Rome burning and then Nero blaming the Christians. And uh, whether or not they were martyred at that time, like tradition says, but it must have been a discouraging time. To think about because there were many many Christians martyred at that time and so I'm sure she got discouraged I'm sure she got discouraged by all the moves she made I you know I can testify moving is not fun I moved from New Mexico I mean from Ohio to New Mexico and then from New Mexico to Ohio and then I was living in a trailer and I couldn't afford it so I moved here to my apartment 
So I can identify with uh, women who have to move a lot. But, you know, Priscilla was a great example to me because even though she had to move a lot and probably didn't have hardly any personal possessions because they had to carry their tools to make their living for tent making. So I doubt if she had any collectibles or a lot of clothes or a lot of extra pots and pans like we women like. Um, and she was a great example to me to deny yourself, to take up the cross and follow Jesus because she apparently held her possessions very loosely and was free of material possessions. She only wanted to serve the Lord and to be a helpmate to her husband, Aquila, and a wonderful helpmate she was. Think about this. We don't know if they lived in a house or if they lived in a tent they had made. They were tent makers, but, you know, it doesn't say, but it does say that Paul lived with them in uh, places. And he also, uh, you know, worked with them in tent making. And as wonderful as that would have been to have uh, had the Apostle Paul teaching you in the evenings, and just talking to him and hearing his experiences. But it was also a lot of extra work for Priscilla because uh, she had to keep the place clean, whether it was a tent or a house. She had to cook um, for not only herself and Aquila, but also Paul. I'm sure she helped them with their tent making, probably doing some sewing in her extra time. Uh, and then she also was a co-worker in presenting the gospel, as we read, you know, that she um, was with Aquila in a teaching Apollos. Uh, the, the way of the Lord more perfectly. So um, she was uh, busy all the time. But you know what? I think the most wonderful thing about Priscilla is that she was an ordinary woman. What an inspiration to the majority of us. The majority of us will never do anything great. We're not going to prophesy and, and it comes true. We're not going to have visions or dreams. Um, we just want to work for the Lord in any way that he can use us. And that's the way it was with Priscilla. And again, what an example she was to me. The most, who I, I'm the most ordinary of all people. And Priscilla... There's not any record that she and Aquila did any of those things of prophesying or um, having dreams or visions or healing anybody, raising them up from the sickbed. She was just willing to be a worker, even willing to make her own living. They did. So what an example to us. She was willing to be meek and quiet, as it says in um, 1 Peter 3, 4, that um, women should have a meek and quiet spirit, and that is precious in the sight of God. So we know that Priscilla had a meek and quiet spirit. Now, meek doesn't mean that you cower down to people. No, um, it means that you are willing to take the back seat. You are willing to say, Lord, whatever it is, whatever you would have me to do, even if it's clinging the church, whatever I will do, I only want to be your servant. So we learn a lot from Priscilla. What an example she is to every woman. And Aquila is an example to every man of how to treat his wife. I'm sure he was kind and gentle to her, and he made her a co-worker. She was not his property, as it was thought of a lot of times in biblical days. Women were just property. They had no rights. She was his co-worker, 
his helpmate. And so Priscilla and Aquila are an example to all of us, men and women. And I'm going to have to close here. And I always hate to close. But I don't want, like I've said so often, every time, I don't want to make this so long that you're getting bored or I start repeating myself or um, that um, you say, oh, I'm not going to watch that anymore. It's too long. It takes too much time. So um, I will close here with Jesus loves you and so do I. Bye-bye, and I hope to see you here Friday. Bye-bye. Have a good rest of the week.